Okay, I'm home, and I'm extremely happy. I'm extremely happy because the testing is over. The testing that we had to do for the last week, last week and now this week, is, is done. It's complete. There was an issue. We're going to debug it, but uh, by and large, tons of things completed successfully. Very happy, very happy indeed. And that means I get to focus my mind on this other stuff. And I realized one of the big things I didn't do was I didn't check a hydrometer reading of our cider that we're making. So I actually don't know what the alcohol content's gonna be in it because I'm gonna go rack it today and I'm gonna put the hydrometer in it and it's gonna sink right to the bottom because the yeast is gonna eat all that sugar. I'll just have an idea of, of what I think it is. I'm gonna guess it's somewhere in between five, six percent, maybe, maybe less. So yeah, I don't know what to expect, but I don't, I do need to pull the carboy out and put it up on the sink so that it settles and then I'm gonna I'm gonna rack it tonight. I got it! You got it! Hey guys, I just wanted to post an update to the Baofeng contest where I think we're almost halfway now. And I wanted to say if you, you, the people watching this, have already entered, there's another way for you to get an entry. If you get your friends or whomever to subscribe and comment with your username and then, you know, whatever they want to do. Your username's fine. Another entry for you. So there's an incentive to get out there, spread the love if you like the channel, if you like my videos. I'd really appreciate it. It would mean a lot to me. So anyway, that's an extra way to get another, another chance to win this. So thanks a lot, and I appreciate it. No more action on airlock, so we're done. I need this carboy to rack into. So part of my doing this today is I really want to know what this tastes like. I want to know if it came out good or what, because you never know until you try it. I, I would like to get back to the Iran situation. We're talking about Iran. Everybody really wants to get back to Iran. It's the easy thing to go after. Like there's no, there's no, the there's no the risk to piss off half of the people by saying Iran shouldn't have a nuke. That's like easy. That's the way you do this. Okay, so let me make my point really quick. I don't have a problem with Planned Parenthood specifically. I have a problem with the few people who are obviously going around and trying to make deals in selling parts of fetuses, even for science because it's taxpayer money. There was no envelope that came to my door that said, should Planned Parenthood sell body parts of babies? Just like most of the things that happen in the government, we don't get a piece of paper that says, should we spend your money on X? Should we spend your money on Y? Everything in the government that is funded by the government should be questioned constantly, and we should decide if it's better done by the private market, period. And that doesn't have to be one or the other. It could be gradients of funding for private market. It could be a private company that gets 10% of tax money to do something similar that Planned Parenthood used to do, et cetera, et cetera. That's my whole point. And we should always be looking at that. Because the less the government does, the better we all are, I think. Look at that face. Would anyone vote for that? The Can you imagine that, the face of our next president? Mr. Trump later said that he was talking about your persona, not your appearance. Please feel free to respond what you think about his persona. <laughs> you know, it's interesting to me, Mr. Trump said that he heard Mr. Bush very clearly and what Mr. Bush said. I think women all over this country heard very clearly what Mr. Trump said. I think she's got a beautiful face and I think she's a beautiful woman. All right, on that note, unless it's... <laughs> It's the most contentious issue on the campaign trail, and the candidates on the stage are split over how to handle it. Spoiler alert, the issue is immigration. Governor Bush, Bush, Mr. Trump has suggested that me? your views on immigration are influenced by your Mexican-born wife. He said that, quote, if my wife were from Mexico, I think I would have a soft spot for people mm -hmm. from Mexico. Did Mr. Trump go too far in invoking your wife? He did. He did. Um, you're proud of your family, just as I am. Correct. To subject my wife into the middle of a raucous 
political conversation was completely inappropriate. And I hope you apologize for that, Donald. Well, I have to tell you, I hear phenomenal things. I hear your wife is a lovely woman. She is. I she's don't fantastic. Know her, and this she is, is a absolutely the love of my life, and she's I right here. And why don't you apologize Good. for her? No, I won't right do that now. because I said nothing yeah. wrong. But I do hear so she's a lovely woman. So here's the deal: American values that could make he us said, special and make us unique. If my we're at wife right were, now. are we going to take of Mexican descent? I might have a softer view on illegal immigration also. And there's nothing wrong with that. Right. That's just a point. Yeah. <laughs> so. He was actually, he was making a statement about him being soft on immigration, which is the insulting part, but there was nothing insulting towards his wife. Right. And what he's trying to play up is the whole Trump hates women thing. Right. And Trump was saying if he had a wife who was Mexican, so he's pointing out that he's he, he he himself might be weak to the concept. Right. I didn't really see it that. Good thing he only wants to sleep with his daughter. That's right. Oh no, that's in French, isn't it? So Leah and I were on our walk and we decided to go to the Dollar Tree. And the idea came to me, what if I build a Dollar Tree bug out kit or prepper kit, whatever you want to call it, go bag, car bag, get home bag, whatever bag. So I don't think I'm going to do it today, but I'm going to come back and I'm going to buy a bunch of stuff. So I'm studying right now. I'm doing my research. Candy. Candy, right? Definitely All the candy. So this is the obvious stuff, right? Pill container, allergy stuff, your liquid goodness over here, tape, pregnancy test, which is like super important in WROL, if you know what I'm saying. I'm already, I already have a bunch of ideas, really, I think, cool ideas too. So this is gonna be fun, I think, guys. This automotive section is actually not that bad. Utility knife, that's a definite buy. And those three pack of jute twine, needle nose pliers, screwdriver set, ah, super glue, that's another awesome bug out thing. Oh, they got dikes here. They have dikes, but they don't have floral wire. Floral wire is used for making snares right and whatnot. There. No, this is like, um, th I want the thinner green stuff. You know what I'm talking about? They do have it here. Oh. A down. You're a liar. Ah, oh, yeah. You know what I gotta do with these. So, Lay and I watched most of the debates, and at some point, we decided we wanted to go on a walk, so I poured myself a beer. Now I'm on wine, I guess. And we decided to just go on a walk around the neighborhood. And I got to thinking about something. Towards the end, and I, I don't know which candidate said this. It's one of the ones that's not very popular. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna quote them verbatim because it doesn't really matter. But the, the point of their message, I think, is the opposite of what they were trying to say. His message was that we have a crazy person in North Korea with nukes. We have people in Iran that are trying to get nukes. We have a gangster in Russia. We have China trying to manipulate money, etc., etc. All those things, right? 
point and I think the takeaway is that none of those things are actually affecting us that much in our day-to-day -day life. The crazy guy with the nukes is not nuking people. Iran has not got a nuke. And even if they do get a nuke, what are they going to be? They're going to be like the crazy person that we just talked about. They're not going to be nuking people because that's not good for business. That's good, not good for the furthering of their people. The reality is, is that we have a lot of problems at home. We're spending too much money largely because of our own government. Whenever a candidate or whoever wants to weave you a story about how bad and how insecure you should feel about the threat to your life by terrorists or some other nation, every time you need to throw it back at them and say, we have larger problems here at home that we need to solve, and then going out and looking at this big, bad, unforeseen enemy who has... Look, Marco Rubio. Was it Marco Rubio, really? Remember that anytime a candidate is trying to sell you on the concept of fear of a nation outside of the US or fear of a people that you don't really know, that's because it's an easy target. It's easy for them to spin a web of their story that they're trying to push. In reality, the chance of you getting killed by someone that's a terrorist or whatever is well below you dying in a car accident, dying to somebody with a knife, dying to somebody with a hammer, or their own hand strangling you to death. The reality is that we have real problems here at home with our spending that has to be brought in order by our own hand. Nobody else can do it. So keep that in mind when it comes time to vote. It doesn't matter if it's Democrat, conservative, or I hope libertarian. Think about something other than outside. Don't think about that. Focus on inside and what's affecting us right now. Who's the libertarian candidate? I don't know, but it's definitely not uh, Rand Paul. It's awful because his name is so close to Ayn Rand. Do you think that's why he named his son Rand? What? Ron Paul. Who knows, maybe. I mean, Ron Paul was libertarian. Mommy! Yeah. Conservative, he was in the conservative Mommy. party, but he was Mommy. like a libertarian. Mommy. Or is, he's not like, Mommy. he's not past tense.